Hey guys, what's up? It's Matt with 86, and I'm taking a look at JM Goes 01. I actually got this at the beginning of March, and I wanted to give myself a good amount of time to check it out for you. I'm going to try to cover as much as I feel like is necessary to really know about it in as short amount of time as possible, so bear with me. The JMGO 01 is a lightweight plastic construction projector. It has a single thread mount on the bottom so that you can mount it upside down on the ceiling or on a tripod, monopod. Uh, that way it gives it a little bit of portability. There's no battery inside though, so you'll still have to plug in via DC. It does have two small rubber feet on one side and one long rubber foot strip on the other side. And that's great for holding the tabletops, desktops, TV stands, things of that nature. Your inputs on the back. And I apologize for the dusty video here. I probably should have wiped this down a little better before I took a shot of it. It has a LAN Ethernet input, optical for sound, two USBs for your local media, two HDMIs, one of which is HDMI ARC, that's audio return channel, and one DC input. So it's pretty stacked back there in my opinion. Leaving the fan on automatic seems to be the best way to feature the most relatively quiet sound you're gonna get. And it is a very quiet fan for this projector and I'm super happy about that. Here, take a listen. Now the internal sound that is built in with this projector is actually not too bad. It's a collaboration event between JMGO and Dynaudio and it sounds all right. It's not something that uh, you, you might want to stick with if you enjoy a little bit better sound, but it's way better than we've seen in a lot of stock projector speakers before. There have been some that I thought were really good, the Brookstone Big Shot back in the day, and that was an incredible sounding little speaker and projector, but we're not talking about that. Take a listen to these speakers that are built into it and see what you think. Now, after a few weeks of using this, we did notice on the lens that we were getting a little bit of dust buildup, which made it look kind of like an explosive flare on there. So I, I've already wiped it since then. I had to wait a little while and build that back up. So here's an example of what I'm talking about on light scenes where I thought something was wrong, like it was some sort of burn occurring, but it's actually just the way the dust was landing on it. Easily wiped away, no big deal. But the only projector I've ever had where this just occurs regularly. Let's get into a little bit of the meat and potatoes of it though. A lot of these listings will sell the O1 model, not the O1 Pro, but the regular O1 model is native 1080p. And to my understanding, it uses a 0.23 Ti, which is Texas Instruments DLP DMD chip. And the native resolution of that chip is 540p. But in conjunction with a process they call, or a implementation that they call expanded pixel resolution, it does achieve a 1080p non-natively. So it still does look really good. It does look 1080p. There's no bad screen door effect, almost no screen door effect whatsoever. But technically, natively, I believe it's a 540p DMD chip, which means that it's not really natively 1080p. The XPR kind of gets it to that point. So non-natively it's 1080p. It looks good, like I said, but I don't know if you want to consider that mismarketing or if they decided that in conjunction with XPR, it's actually 1080p. I'll leave that up to you guys to decide, but I believe the chip itself is limited at 540p. Like I said, that screen door is almost non-existent. Take a look here and see if you can detect. On a black crush test, I can see up to box seven, and box seven is a good place to be for a projector especially, because you're always gonna have some sort of light to combat, whether it's ambient lights or room on lights. You're gonna, you're gonna deal with that a little bit, so being able to see box seven means that even with a little bit of light, you're gonna have some idea of the darkness levels. You're gonna have a good contrast ratio there. Now, as I've seen with a lot of projectors too, the onboard OS that they use, Luna OS, it's really just an Android GUI, and at best, and this is my opinion, it's at best just a pretty transfer screen. In order to use the built-in OS for streaming or anything, you're gonna have to do a little bit of side loading and have a lot of bit of patience. And usually I'll just skip over using built-in OS's like this all the time. I'll just go straight to an, an Amazon Fire Stick, a Roku, something of that nature, bypassing the whole ability to go on board because it's just, they just never really are what you want them to be. And while there's a deeper understanding as to why that's the case, it's still the case. 
As far as the menu settings though, they're very straightforward, very intuitive. From HDR to tuning basic image settings and user defined and otherwise, it's super easy to go through and use the menu to find something that you'll like. There are some presets in there and I do wish the presets told me what they were because I'd like to really build off of the office one. But overall going in there and setting some of your user defined controls, it's really simple to do. You can do things also like checking your audio settings, calibrations, orientations, key zones, it's all super straightforward. There's even an app to help you get flattening on the wall. The app is super easy to use too. It's not as daunting as I thought it was going to be. And I think the biggest thing about the app that they want people to be able to do is eventually do more with it as far as putting the screensaver up. The Luna OS does include things like a screensaver clock. So when you're on the home screen, that one I referred to as the pretty transfer screen, as long as you're not in an output device, it will eventually, or you can set it to eventually, like within 10, 15 minutes, go to this screensaver, which is pretty nice. You can walk in the bedroom and see, oh, I got this big clock on the wall and you can customize it with a few variations, but there's not a whole lot there yet. It's overall a pretty neat feature though. But like I said, if you have something plugged in, like the Amazon Fire Stick or something, as long as that's active in your input, it's not just going to go to your clock screensaver. So for me, it doesn't serve the full purpose because it won't override the input to go back to the screensaver. I don't know if that's something that they can work on in, uh, in like a future update for it because it does seem to get updates fairly regularly. But that would be pretty neat that if it had the option to decide, okay, you've been inactive for a while on this input, let's go ahead and go to your screensaver and we'll put the clock on the wall for you. Now I did find on this site that the brightness is listed at 800 ANSI rating. Whether this is a true ANSI rating or not I actually don't know but for a UST and for this UST especially it doesn't feel that bad and it does feel brighter it definitely feels way brighter than the wo 2 S6A which is what this projector replaced and as well as this one posts a much larger image in my case I'm getting about 90 inches and I'm about 32 to 35 centimeters from the wall you like that I went imperial and metric on you hopefully I posted conversions in post so I guess what that would be is I'm getting 228.6 centimeters at about 32 to 35 centimeters from the wall with all lights on, the image can be a bit washed out, really washed out actually, but it can be viewed well enough to watch. So if I have all the lights on and I'm doing something, folding clothes, you know, whatever I'm doing with all the lights on, I can still look over and get an idea of what I'm seeing. That's not the most enjoyable watching experience, but I'm able to see what is on the screen for the most part. And a lot of that depends on what you're watching too. If you're watching something animated that has brighter colors, you tend to see those a lot better than something that's a darker movie like The Dark Knight, for instance, where there's a lot of dark scenes. It's harder to see some of that stuff with the lights on. In the darkness though, man, it is absolutely gorgeous on everything I watch. I can see everything I want to see very well, which really just brings me to that whole, you get a lot for what you pay for here considering a lot of ultra short throws on the market are really at that enthusiast price level. You have a simple button on top in order to power it on. It can also give a little bit of minor control, but you're definitely going to be a little dependent on that remote. It's going to be where all your features and functions are. The remote is super straightforward. If you have Alexa and you live in that Alexa ecosystem, you can definitely tie this all in and it has a speaker built in and a microphone so that you can speak to it and use it as if it's an Alexa control devices with it, have Alexa control it. It's very, very user friendly in that, in that regard too, especially if you live in that Amazon Alexa ecosystem. So here's the neat thing about the remote too. And while I've retired my Nvidia Shield recently because I didn't like the color reproduction I was getting from it and the projector spent a lot of time fighting with that, the Bluetooth remote is capable of taking over for devices like that. Now, when I plugged in the Roku, I don't get it to quite function with the Roku as well. I'm using a Roku stream bar now and the remote will not take over and control for the Roku. But I figured that was a pretty neat thing that's worth mentioning is that this remote seems to be able to just commandeer a device you're using and you can use it instead of that device's remote so that you have an all-in-one remote. Turn projector on, swap over go to your input and then use the same remote to go through the device that's plugged in well hopefully because like i said it didn't work with my roku but it worked with the nvidia shield the remote makes things like quick focus and keystone adjustments super easy to use usually once you get one of these set the way you want it that's pretty much all she wrote you just leave it at that and turn it on and off when when you need to when you want to watch on it you won't hopefully have to go through and do focus and keystone adjustments every time you turn it on if you do there might be a bigger problem there all the sensors on the front of this where the lens are definitely make it really easy just to auto focus and auto keystone right away it, it does a really good job of detecting and mapping the wall on its own and posting a very nice image with very little hassle. Going back to talking about JMGO's app too, just a little bit, the color calibration that it has, for instance, if you have a yellow wall or a gray wall versus a white wall or a black wall, you can go in and set it to do a color calibration work and flash a couple images of colors up on the wall and be able to detect, to adjust, and to ultimately hopefully give you a better presented image, depending on what color your wall is. I know a lot of people will probably use screens, but I'm, I'm a big wall guy for this. I like simplicity. I like it when it's not on to look like nothing's there. 
As far as for gaming goes, this might be a good choice. Also, DLP projectors have the lowest latency delay times for gaming. You're going to get better gaming results out of DLP projectors because of that low latency time. They're just faster. To people in the art community that are looking for a projector to take out there, put on a tripod, post up an art image, I will say there is an annoyance here, but it's a good annoyance because it's a safety feature. Anytime you get in the way of that light beam, there's a sensor that can detect anything that gets too close or in front of it, and it'll dim your light in order to protect you. And also going back to the portability thing, that there's no battery inside of this, you'll require direct current power in order to power it while you're trying to trace your art onto a wall or platform, whatever you're putting your art onto. So just keep that in mind as well. After using it for a couple months, it's almost always on. We actually are really bad about turning it off. So if you're curious about its longevity and how it's been doing for this couple of months, it's very solid. It gets a big thumbs up from me. I would easily recommend this to people that I know. And I continue to hope to see more companies like JMGO put out these more lower priced, nice projectors that can be an all-in-one solution, a replacement for a TV for people looking to get in the ultra short throws. Because as much as short throws and long cast projectors are really nice, they're obstructive. You have to hang things, you have to run things. It's not always the best. Now, if you're doing a home theater setup, those are definitely the way to go. But for something casual watching, something in your living room, something in your bedroom, ultra short throws like this are fantastic. Anyways, guys, I hope this was somewhat helpful and useful to you. I hope you guys uh, took something away from it. Have a great day, night, whatever it is, and I'll see you in the next video I do.